Meanwhile, Facebook is taking content control a step too far now. The social media giant is forced to apologize after an attempt to allow businesses to censor words like unionize on its office management platform. The move immediately sparked controversy and backlash from the nation's largest union group, the AFL-CIO. It re represents more than 12 and a half million workers. Facebook has also uh, halted further development of that feature. Joining me right now is the uh, president of the AFL-CIO, Richard Trumpka. Richard, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. You are demanding a personal apology by Mark Zuckerberg to the working people. You know, I exactly. Facebook holds itself out as this champion of free speech. And yet here it is developing a platform that allows employers to totally deny it, their employees free speech and blacklist them, which is illegal, and sort of truncate or eliminate their ability to talk about unionization, which is also illegal. So he, he's doing two things here that are ter terrible. One, he's doing illegal stuff like blacklisting and, and making uh, eavesdropping on it, the employees talk about unionization that's illegal. And the second thing is he's undermining the notion of free speech because it's only his free speech that he's been a champion of, not workers' free speech. He deserves to, we should have a, a, an apology. He, we demand an apology uh, and they should abandon further work on these type of platforms. Well, I mean, then you have to agree with both Republicans and Democrats who have been pushing to change Section 230 in the Telecom Act. And we know that uh, there were proposals last week to scale back Section 230, which shields Internet companies from lawsuits for content posted on their sites by third parties. It also allows these companies to make good faith efforts to moderate content. Bottom line here, Richard, is when the telecom law went into place in 1996, this section gave this protection to technology companies because they were supposed to be quote unquote platforms. But what we've seen from this move in terms of eliminating the word unionize, as well as shadow banning, as well as taking down tweets and, and posts that they don't agree with, they've taken a side and they do censor information. You agree with then the proposal to uh, reverse Section 230 then? We, we think that there needs to be a change to it exactly, because things like this shouldn't be allowed to happen. They, they acted here as more than a platform. They acted here as an employer advocate, an illegal employer advocate, uh, to stop free speech and to stop unionization. Uh, they shouldn't be shielded from that type of conduct or others similar to that. Yeah, it's unbelievable that they're even attacking the unions. I want to talk to you about business with China, the Chinese Communist Party having taken a lot of jobs over the years, threatening American strength. I spoke with A.G. William Barr on Sunday, and he uh, broke news with me over the weekend telling me that uh, exclusively that American businesses are prioritizing profit over patriotism. Watch this, Richard. Got to get your reaction. They haven't been competing fairly, and the president has confronted this when no one else has. And the American business community has been a big part of the problem, because they're willing, ultimately, many of them, to sacrifice the long-term viability of their companies for short-term profit, so they can get their stock options and move into the Gulf resort. That's what's driving some of this. They're not taking the long-term view and the national view, the American of, of maintaining the American strength. Well, I was talking with one money manager the other day, and he said, look, Marie, I'm not going to call good, bads, good guys and bad guys. It's not my role to call out good guys and bad guys. So, yeah, the growth is in China, and that's where I want to invest. Well, you know what? We're not speaking German today because the American business in the past didn't think that way. Yes. They stood with the United States. And all the pri privileges and the benefits and the stability and the rule of law and the ability to profit as they do, both as companies and individuals, comes from the strength of this country. Your thoughts, Richard Trumpka, on the idea that corporations are not looking at the Chinese Communist Party as a national security threat wanting to grow grow their businesses in China, invest in China, and put jobs there as well. 
Well, it, it undermines uh, what we do back at home, particularly when you send overseas things that are necessary for national security. You got defense electronic parts, you got pharmaceutical agreements, you got rare earth uh, magnets uh, materials that are all going overseas. And once they get they get a, a hold over there or they start producing over there, then they have every incentive in the world to keep things open and to protect the market in China, not in the United States. Uh, we have a tax, tax code, Maria, that rewards them for going overseas. We need to change that. We have other pr provisions and trade laws that actually reward them for taking jobs overseas to China. And, and China, is, he was right, uh, they cheat, they don't play by the rules, they manipulate currency, they don't live up to their own uh, minimum wage laws, health and safety laws, and that gives them a tremendous dis uh, advantage over an American producer. So they go over there, and once they get embedded in China, they advocate for everything that's good for China. They advocate that back home. They use their immense lobbying yeah. power to prevent us from ch passing laws tax laws that would not reward them for going overseas, but they, they want more rewards. And so they use their immense well, bargaining power to do that. What's that? Yeah, you mentioned lobbying groups. You're right. You're spot on on that, Richard, because the Chinese Communist Party has been able to create lobbying groups in Hollywood, in corporate America, in academia. So real quick, Richard, your reaction to the news today, President Trump signing an order Monday temporarily barring new immigrants on the slate of employment-based visas, including the H-1B, the H-2Bs, these are skilled workers from coming to the United States amid the coronavirus pandemic so that those jobs can go to American workers. Look, why do you do that temporarily? We've been saying this for 10 years. If the visa system was structured properly, you would only be able to bring people in when there was a real need and only when they paid them an adequate wage and an adequate benefit. Well, we, we said, let's restructure the visa laws. We got opposition. This president had opposition to us. But it's time now for us to say, these visa laws don't work. Don't just do this temporarily. Let's do this and make it a sane system so that when there's a real need, yeah. we can get people. But when there isn't a real need, we shouldn't be able to bring people in to lower the wages of American workers. It's, it sounds like you need to take this case directly to CEOs of companies, Richard. As you just heard what Beiji Barr said, they want to make money in China. They see the growth there. They're not seeing it as a national security issue and as a jobs issue. You're pinpointing it right on. Richard, it's good to see you this morning as always. Thank you, sir. Maria, good to see you again. Stay safe.